If there's one problem, one thing lacking, one thing that I would change on everybody without even watching them that would make them improve, it's Coach Greg, and in today's video, I'm gonna explain how do you get your best bang for your buck in the gym. Not everyone can commit to 60 plus minutes a day in the gym, six, seven days a week. And so with limited time, it's gonna be extremely difficult to get in the 10 to 20 sets you need per muscle per week to optimize muscle growth. Research has shown this to be optimal. However, if you don't have the time to do it, you can't just do it. And so what a lot of people are doing is they're dramatically cutting down their rest times between sets. They might be doing 15, 30, 45 seconds rest between these sets. So although they're getting the volume needed, they're not getting enough rest and therefore not lifting heavy enough weights. And remember, your body is growing because it has a reason to grow, a stimulus for muscle growth to occur. With progressive overload, lifting heavier weights and doing more than you did last time, your body can keep growing. But if you're not resting long enough, you can't lift the heavy weights needed to maximize muscle hypertrophy. Not to mention the majority of people who train are training half ass, half ass at best. They're going to the gym, going through the motions. And so I just got back from Punta Cana and I'm going to the gym and I'm watching the people train. I'm checking people out, how are they doing? And they're going through the motions. They're training half ass and I get it. Perhaps it's a deload for you. When you travel, you're just taking a deload going easy. But if you're trying to optimize your growth, you can't just be going through the motions all the time. You're at the resort. You don't want to train all morning. That's a nice sunny day. You're in there and you're out. But the problem is you're not going hard enough. And so what can you do? Well, to make up for lack of time, lack of sets, you can increase workout intensity. Intensity is king. And so the next time you go to the gym, unless you're already overtraining, unless you're one of the 5% of the world that's actually already training hard enough, you can use this information to help you in your own training. This is what I tell myself when I'm in the gym. When I'm about to put the weight down, when I don't feel it today, when I'm not in the mood to keep going, to keep pushing myself, because trust me, some days are gonna be shitty, some are gonna be amazing, and most gonna be somewhere in the middle. And so the next time you're doing your set of 10, and you're at set 10, and you're like, ah, I've had enough, I'm gonna put the weight down. Don't. Do one more rep. And why? Because consider this, think of this. And I know this is bro science, not backed up by peer reviewed meta analysis by a hundred different researchers. But if you use this information, if you go into the gym and you apply this, you're going to make gains. You're gonna do better. If you're at a plateau and you can't make any gains and you're not training hard enough, do this. The next time you're about to stop a set, do one more rep because of this. That one extra rep that you are about to do counts more for your overall muscle growth than the entire set you just performed combined. That's right. If you did a set of 10 and put the weight down, consider if you had done one more rep, the 11th rep, that one 11th rep would count more for your muscle growth than the entire set of 10 that you just did. Does that not motivate you to do one more rep? You just spent 30 seconds doing 10 bicep curls. You're about to put the weight down. Don't do one more because by doing that one extra rep, it's going to cause more muscle growth than the entire set of 10 you just did. That applies at any rep range. If you're at rep five, the fifth rep helps more than the first four you just did. That extra rep could be the rep that you need to do to stimulate your body to grow more muscle. You need a stimulus for muscle growth to occur. It needs to be above and beyond what your body's normally accustomed to doing. If your body can handle it, it's easy, no big deal. Why would it grow bigger? You could go for a walk every day for the next five years and not get faster. Why? Because your body can hardly handle walking. But if you run, even if it's only for a few steps, your body's thinking, wait, What's this? We've not done this before. We better get adapted to running. And so if you do one more rep, your body might be thinking, wait a minute, I didn't want to do that 11 rep. That was hard. If he's going to push us that far, that hard, we best grow more muscle to get used to that. Normally, he just does five sets of 10, stops. Today, he kept going. He did one more rep. That 11 rep, that was hard. We need to grow bigger. 
And so when I analyze different physiques, the people with the best physiques, they're the ones that are willing to go through the pain, the torture, the torment, the feeling of being tired, the burn. They're willing to push themselves where others are not. Most people who go to the gym train half-ass and most have half-ass physiques. And I know correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation, but how many Olympia caliber physiques are training half-ass in the gym all the time? In comparison, how many people with half-ass physiques are training half-ass? Do you think people become Olympic champions, marathon runners, cyclists, sports of all kinds by training half-ass? You can do cardio every day, easy, enjoying a movie while doing the treadmill, and be fit. You can be healthy. You can go and lift weights every day, half-ass, stopping when you're tired, and develop a little bit of muscle. And of course, it's better than nothing. But if you want to progress from beginner to intermediate to advanced, at some point, you need to be willing to push through the pain, the discomfort. I can go for a bike ride every day, heart rate, 130, modern pace. Nothing wrong with that. Going to make me fit, live a longer and healthier life. But if I want to be better and race and be a champion, I have to go harder, push further. And so the next time you're in the gym, the muscles start to burn and you're questioning, should I do that extra rep? Do the extra rep. Not only that, think of the time it's going to save. If you do one hard set really, really hard, your body is going to grow. Perhaps not optimally as much as 10 to 20 sets, but you don't have the time. I have a number of people hire me. They don't want to go to the gym an hour to an hour and a half, six days a week. Some can commit 30 minutes, three times a week. Hey, what's the least I can go to the gym and get the most bang for my buck? Get the most results for the least amount of work. To those people, I suggest make your sets hard. If there's one problem, one thing lacking, one thing that I would change on everybody without even watching them that would make them improve, it's training intensely, it's training harder. And one other thing you can think of, which I've mentioned in previous videos, if you're not sure if you've gone hard enough, if you've trained to failure, consider asking yourself this question. For $1,000 per rep, could you have done another rep? If the answer is yes, you didn't train to failure. All too often, people overestimate how hard they're training. They're thinking, yeah, I train pretty hard. And then you ask them, well, how hard did you train? Well, I probably could have done another rep. Really? For $1,000 per rep, how many more could you have done? Oh, probably five. You didn't train hard. And there's something known as a training stress core that is used in cardiovascular sports, and it can be applicable to lifting weights. Consider doing one all-out set to failure, like setting a Guinness Book of Records with one set 50 reps. You do one set of 50, it would be way harder than, for example, doing 10 sets of five. You've done the same amount of work, but one is way harder, gonna cause way more growth than the other. You could do 10 sets of five or one set of 50. Who do you think's gonna get more gains? The 10 sets of five could make you weaker. It's way too easy, not a challenge. Versus one set of 50 done in a minute, takes you less time, one minute, and does more for your overall muscle growth than 10 sets of five that might have taken 10, 20, 30 minutes. So if you don't have all the time in the world to train the gym, when you do go to the gym, train hard. Intensity can make up for volume. You don't have the time to train an hour on your bike every day? Ride hard for 20 minutes. Who do you think is going to be faster? The person that rides hard, really hard, 20 minutes on the bike, five days a week, or the person who trains half-ass an hour, five days a week? I'll let you answer that. You decide. Because if you're always pushing half-ass, you're going to be fit. But if you don't push yourself above a certain intensity, how fast can you get? Your body can only adapt for so long if you're not pushing yourself. But if you go truly hard every time, your body can keep going. And I get it. You can have deloads. You can do all the things you're supposed to do. But overall, train harder than last time. So unless you are already the hardest worker in the room, train harder, do the extra rep, ending it here. GregDuset.com for coaching. Greg Duset IP Pro. Please watch at least one of those bloops. Subscribe, click the bell button, get the circle diet book, the cookbooks, the coaching plans from me and my team, training books, all kinds of stuff going on. And until next time, I am out.